motion. To speak against motion, now I welcome the Right Honourable Lord Sumption. Mr. President, it won't surprise you to know that I am not going to suggest to this House that liberty is an absolute value. Of course, we have to wear seat belts. Of course, we are not free to drive at 90 miles an hour the wrong way down one way streets. We are not free to mug people. We have to avoid polluting rivers. These are basic rules, among many others, for cooperative social existence. But this debate is about much more fundamental choices than those. This debate is about basic civil rights. The right not to be confined in a place appointed by the state at the discretion of ministers. The right to go where you please without having to justify yourself to the police. The right to associate freely with other human beings the right to earn an honest living, regardless of whether the state regards it as necessary or useful. The right to make your own judgments about the risks of daily life in the light of your own circumstances and those of the people around you, rather than having a minister to decide for you. These are the kind of rights which this motion invites you to surrender for the sake of safety. Every one of them was violated during the pandemic and maybe again. None of these things have ever been ha happened before in response to even more serious pandemics than we've experienced. Now, civil rights of this kind are not just a matter of convenience. They are part of the respect that we owe to our fellow citizens to honour their autonomy. They are fundamental to our existence as social animals. They are fundamental to our life as a community. And they are basic conditions of human creativity and human well-being and happiness. They are values which honour us as human beings. They are, in short, what life is actually about. Now, all liberty carries risks. Mostly, they are risks to ourselves, but sometimes they are risks to other people. And when we talk about safety, what we are really talking about is the avoidance of risks. The basic question posed by this motion is, whose responsibility should it be to limit the ordinary risks inseparable from social existence, which include epidemic diseases. Should it be the responsibility of each one of us, or should it be the responsibility of the state? Now, we all have a personal responsibility to look after our own safety. If we are vulnerable, it is our responsibility to shelter ourselves. Whether we are vulnerable or not, we have, have also have a personal responsibility to limit, as far as we can do it, the risks which the ordinary incidents of life have for other people, for our neighbours. Now, liberty and safety are not necessarily inconsistent. They are only in conflict if we transfer our personal responsibilities to the state, because the state has only one response available, namely coercion. If we make the state responsible for ensuring that nothing goes wrong, then it will coerce us in order to ensure that nothing can go wrong. And because the risk of things going wrong is inseparable from life itself, that will almost always mean suppressing some aspect of life itself. On that point. I won't yield yet. Throughout history, the chief instrument of every despotism has been fear. 
fear of enemies, whether those enemies be foreigners, criminals, economic misfortune, or infectious disease. Every authoritarian government, every tyranny, every tin pot dictator depends upon the willingness of people voluntarily to surrender basic civil rights in return for protection against some such peril. And you, every one of you, is being invited by the proposers of this motion to join the ranks of those who have trodden down that melancholy path through the ages. Sorry? Not yet. The dangers which these authoritarian governments uh, have put before you are real dangers. Disease, crime, external enemies, economic misfortune, these things are unfortunately risks inseparable from life. But unless we are prepared to live with risk and to take our own precautions to protect ourselves and others, we will run a much greater risk, the risk of snuffing out much that is precious about human life and that makes it worth living. Now, I accept that there may sometimes be cases where the state will do the job more efficiently than the mass of responsible citizens. And that will no doubt be a very powerful argument for those who worship efficiency. But sometimes is an important reservation. States have a taste for crude, one-size-fits-all solutions. That's what happens when ministers uh, make their own risk assessments for everybody and prevent them from making their own. States have a poor record for ignorance, incompetence, and corruption of one kind or another. But let us suspend disbelief for a moment and just assume that we live under a state of total efficiency, a state of unlimited knowledge of our circumstances, a state of complete power of control. Now, such a state as that might well do the job of protecting us against risks more efficiently than the mass of citizens. But which of us would want to live under a state of total efficiency, unlimited knowledge of us, and complete power of control? Now, the real price of transferring responsibility for our safety from ourselves to the state is simply too high. <coughs> its cost in terms of basic human values is too great. Yet that is the price which this motion in, is inviting all of you to pay. I would invite you to uphold one of humanity's noblest values and throw this motion out. <laughs>